So, hi, I'm Dr. Cynthia Clark. I'm an acupuncture physician, applied clinical nutritionist, creator of Energy Evolution, and I'm the president of Longevity Wellness. Okay, everybody remember? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good, <laughs> um, good. and so what we're here for today is we're here for, what are we here for? Yay! Good, you all know why you're here. That's not always the case in these classes, so <laughs> delighted. Um, and we're going to be doing some special things today. So many of you know me from clinic and uh, you know that I specialize in digestion. You know why? Well, I've had trouble with it. You know, most people, their things that they wind up doing in life is because, you know, they had an experience that changed the way that they saw it and they realized that they could do something about it and so that's what they chose to go do. So. Uh, so, yes, this is the case with me in my in digestion. Um, in fact, when I was in school, back when I was in, um, mostly this happened in, in high school, uh, every single morning, I thought the way that one woke up was um, from excruciating pain. Uh, so every single morning, I would wake up, and the way that I would know, I would like, kind of be like in that little twilight, like, oh, well, I never stayed in bed very long, because what happened next was really, really, really painful. And so I just thought that that was like that for everybody, and I didn't know otherwise. Um, I did mention at some point that to, to my dad that there was, you know, maybe something wasn't right and that things hurt sometimes, like often, because I would wind up in the school nurse's office and she would ask me things like, did you have breakfast today, young lady? And I would say yes, and she'd say, what do you have? What did you have? And I would say, eggs, and she would go, maybe don't have eggs, and I'd say, okay. So I'd have something else, and I'd be in the school nurse's office the next day, and she's like, did you have breakfast? And I'm like, yes, and she's like, what did you have? And I'm like, cereal? And she's like, hmm. don't have cereal. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I don't think that's it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, you keep telling it, pretty soon I'm not gonna be eating. So we wound up going to my doctor's office. Now, I loved my doctor. You might think otherwise, because I'm such a big fan of not taking pharmaceuticals, but let me tell you how I met do you want to hear this story? Yeah, like, yeah. Okay, it's kind of a little bit. But Okay, so I met my doctor when I was five years old. And we had just moved to Houston, and it was 2 o'clock in the morning, and I had 103.5 degree fever, and my poor papa was freaking out. And so he did what any good dad would do. He went to the yellow pages, and he went to the doctor section, and he went straight down the doctor's. Uh, guess what letter my doctor's name began with? Z. A. Yeah. Closer to that one. Uh, C. Yeah. C. <laughs> yeah. He just kept calling until somebody answered, and Dr. Couch kindly answered, and he said, put her in an ice bath. And so I still have this very, very, very vivid memory of something that was very uncomfortable, but very healing for me. Because that temperature went down, I think, honestly, I truly believe that it was harder on my dad than it was on me. <laughs> he was like, ah, I have to do this to my little daughter. But, but it brought my fever down. And then the next day I went in to go see Dr. Couch. And over the course of my time with him, I had what I now understand is a pretty unique experience, which is that Dr. Couch was an older gentleman. This would have been around 1980. I mean, he was an older gentleman at that time, so he was about uh, 60 years old in his practice and that means that he went to medical school I've pieced all of this together since then right like nobody told me this story when I was a little girl that means that he went to medical school really before the advent of pharmaceuticals being the primary course of treatment so when I was a little girl and I got sick I would go to the doctor and I would say it hurts when I breathe and he would say don't breathe. Yeah. <laughs> Here's some medicine for you. Well, he would say, don't breathe, because um, that, that would make me laugh. And then he would say to my dad, oh, she has an upper respiratory infection. Uh, she shouldn't have any dairy right now. So no milk, no cheese, no ice cream. If she has to have something cold for her throat, then you know, let her have some sherbet, but nothing with any dairy in it. So I learned that when I was five years old and I went through my whole childhood school and upbringing knowing that kind of information because Dr. Couch was a true doctor. The word doctor means educator. 
which is why I'm here sharing information with you today because I think that's my job. Because, because the more you know about how your body works and what you can do for it, then the more you can do and the more you learn, especially about foods that are beneficial for you and at what times, then the more powerful you are to be able to address your health in like the early stages of a disease. So when I was growing up and I was uh, in like intermediate school and I would see somebody that was coughing and wheezing and um, you know we would be at school lunch and they were eating pizza and ice cream, I was just like, are you stupid? <laughs> How do you not know this? Yeah. Like, why are you doing that? That is the worst possible thing to do. Like, there must be something wrong with you. And I didn't realize until years later that nobody had told anybody those things. Like, that was my unique gift from from Dr. Couch. Thank you, Dr. Couch. So, um, so, so, so all of this great stuff came from Dr. Couch. And also, when I had some. Uh, when I had this terrible, awful pain, eventually Dr. Couch did prescribe me something. And um, we'll be talking a little bit later about uh, why that isn't a great choice. The thing that, the one thing that he did prescribe me during this time wasn't a great choice. So, um, okay, so thank you for hearing that part of my story. You'll be hearing other stories as we go along and uh, because I get to see amazing things happen in clinic. Um, one of the other, I'll jump for it. I'll tell you one other little one real quick. Uh, so jump forward in time and you know, different things happen in life. And then a few years ago, not so long ago, uh, I was in this line of work. I'm doing this like natural healthcare stuff and I'm specializing in digestive issues. And uh, I have a terrible, awful, excruciating gut pain that is totally random. At this time, I'm eating the best diet on the planet <laughs> because, you know, it's me and I walk my walk and like, there's no possible way that it could possibly be food that's doing this to me. Like, I've been eating super healthy. I hadn't had a, a single grain of sugar for two months. Like, it couldn't possibly be what I was eating. Sort of, kind of. And yet I found myself in this humiliating place. I felt... I mean, truthfully, what I felt is I felt betrayed by my gut because it hurt so much and because the symptoms were so confusing. It, it wasn't that I would eat something and then my gut would hurt. It was, it was totally random and it really started taking away my, my desire to eat food because, you know, think of it. If this is a person that you're in a relationship with and they just like randomly go crazy on you, do you want to be around that person very much? No. <laughs> well, I mean, I hope not. Uh, no, and, and that's how my relationship with food was becoming. And so um, so I, I went through two and a half months of this, this excruciating, horrible, awful, terrible, no good pain, at the end of which I finally figured out that I had an H. pylori infection. And I then slowly started cobbling together remedies and testing things and seeing what worked and, you know, step by step walking through this. But it was miserable. I mean, I was, I, I, I went from being a very active, uh, you know, exercise, meditate, eat good food, take good care of myself to like, I don't give up. <laughs> this is working and it's horrible. So, um, so when people come to me with this kind of pain and this kind of frustration and this kind of uh, lack of zest for life, I really get it because I, I know what that's like and I know how, how much that can affect us. Um, okay, so later on when we, when we get to that section, I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, before we move on, I'd like to hear from you because I know that there's several of you in here that have been to our classes before and you use this work. And one of my very, very, very favorite things about teaching this is hearing the stories of, of how you're using this in your lives because um, this becomes your own work. This becomes your own creative opportunity to shift your life or sometimes you're doing work on other people and to shift uh, the energies of other people. So before we move on, I'd like to take a moment and to go around the room and hear from you guys. So Carol, would you care to start? Yep, because I guess we have the same sort of random uh, thing happen. So, 
So I feel like enlight I'm enlightened by what she's taught me. Um, I don't use my pendulum as much as I should. I'm still trying to. Okay, no judgment. Well, yeah. But I know I'm that trying. you use it, and I know you. I do. What do you use it for? Well, I I'll, I'll if I have something bad, <laughs> I'll ask for help with like okay I know like okay example I made a recipe that I knew was for my husband who we were also trying to get to being healthier. I think um, it was the lettuce wraps from like but like completely uh, paleo, no, no fee version of P.F. Chang. Oh, nice. So it's really very good. Yeah. But the we'll all be over for dinner. <laughs> I'll pass the recipe. Yeah. Um, it calls for almond butter in the, in the recipe, and I didn't have any, so I had to use like a little scoop of peanut butter. Well, I knew peanut, peanut butter is bad for me, and I know it's bad for me, and I never want it. I always desire it, and it was I wasn't going to make a whole other meal, so it's like, okay, what do I do? I took out my little pendulum and I was like, I did, I don't know, it worked. <laughs> and I was able to eat it and I didn't have any any problems from it. So I kind of asked. Yay! It. Yay! And it worked. Yay! I don't rely on it. I mean, the big question is why can't I eat everything bad and just make it fix it? But I don't do that because I don't think that's logical. Um, so yeah, that's an example of, of kind of backtracking of something I know I shouldn't have had. And it will help me not have the horrible, you know, bloat that I would normally have had if I ate that thing. I love the resilience that you're gaining and how you're able to enjoy foods that like let you walk around in the world a little bit more. Yes. I'm, yeah. I'm enjoying food more. I was just like she said, I didn't want to eat, I didn't want to go out to dinner, I didn't I so I there are things that I just think, oh, that would be really good to have or whatever, whatever. But I know that it's not gonna hurt me. Yay. And we'll talk more about the why of I that. I don't know the why, right? Yeah, so we'll talk more about the, the why can't I just change it, everything into, <laughs> like, why can't I just eat ho-ho's and ding-dongs for the rest of my life and have that be awesome? Uh, okay, Kira. I most recently have been um, using my ding-dong to clear things when when like an old trauma surfaces or a thought pops into my head and I'm like wait a second no I don't want that or energy around me I just instantly clear it which has been really nice instead of letting it just kind of fester and then also recently my niece was in a car accident and she lives in Colorado um, and uh, it's hard not to be around your loved ones when they're going through a thing and not be able to help out but with energy work I can help out even though I'm not near her so I was able to do that. Yay. Who me? Who you? <laughs> Ray! Well I use several modalities on a daily basis. Shen technique, um, Nagong techniques, the pendulum, software, prayer. For those of you that are new to this class, these are all techniques that we learn over time through the different classes. So you just have to digest all this information. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you. And, and that is one of the reasons why I come every month, because I learn more every time I'm here. And, it's and then I get energy. to use it. So what have basis. you been using it on lately? Energy. Mm -hmm. It's like keeping your energy up. Oh yeah, and my wife's. We're in the process of moving and Neither one of us is in the shape to be moving, but we have had no choice. And we are both, we're both so beat up, we don't know whether we can look forward, but at the same time, without the techniques I've been using, we'd have collapsed two weeks ago. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Good job. Uh, Maria. Oh my goodness, <laughs> I am such a slow learner. But I've been getting good reports on you. I know you've been a diligent this, student. This is something that I will not depart from. <laughs> SRC. Uh, the SRC. You had a story recently. Would you be willing to share it? About using SRC? You don't have to give a lot of details. Be vague. General. But I think Tracy helped you fix the computer. Oh, yes, yes. I'm still... You know, learning. I am not very savvy with electronics. Of, you know, or not modern things. I can't even work my phone to this. You know, and I 
I'm ready to change it already to a, a better, you know, quality phone. And I still haven't learned this one, you know, <laughs> all the things. But uh, it is it is so, so gratifying to program something and see results right away. I, I need to program something now that I do not know how to, and I need your help, Ray. No problem. <laughs> it is about my daughter who- You'll get time with that in just a, in just a moment. He's gonna go out with you guys and- Yes, my daughter is having uh, phone loss. She's 58 years old, okay, I'm 81. And she went to the dentist, she has to have a, uh, an implant in her upper, you know, jaw. And uh, the doctor said that she needs a graft, bone graft, and then an implant. And I really have programmed, you know, her relationship and mine with Tracy's help. And it's, it's working so well because even on the phone with her, I can see the changes, you know, that, that stress feeling that I had in the past is just subsided. Yay! Yay. Yeah. Oh, what a huge relief. It's wonderful. I just that want to learn more and more. Wonderful. <laughs> yes. Good. Tracy. I'm um, like Ray. I keep coming back because every time it seems like there's something more that I learn and it's just so beneficial. I have so many stories I can share now. Um, I've recently started playing with SRC probably oh, maybe about two weeks or so now. I lost track of time, but that's the computer software um, program, and that's the newest thing that I've played with. So I want to share, though, Shen is something that I just learned the last class I was at, and I kind of forgot about it until a couple weeks after class. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I just learned this technique, and I haven't been using it. <laughs> so um, I went online to learn more about Grandmaster David because I was going to start the software and I just wanted to understand more about the person that created it and in, so the video that I found was him teaching the Shen technique and it was great it was like a four-part short video series and I totally recommend it um, and it just helped me even more to appreciate how I could use the Shen technique and I used it one day when I was just feeling you know well I've used it lots of days but one day in particular I was planning to meet a friend for um, an afternoon in Tampa to do a couple like shopping errands that I had been trying to create the time to do for months and finally the time arose and we were going to meet and go but I was feeling really just tired and run down and not excited or you know uplifted and I didn't want to meet her with that energy so I did the Shen technique to just raise my energy level and cheer and it works like that and I don't even feel like I need to repeat it usually because I get such an impact from the first time, but sometimes I repeat it anyway. Um, so that was that. It helped so much. And she was struggling too, and I was encouraging her to do it. Um, the other thing I can share about SRC, I can, SRC is blowing me away as far as <laughs> its accuracy and kind of the feedback it gives when it identifies exactly kind of what it's working on. You're like, oh, some, it identified my cat's wounds before I knew they were there. Mm -hmm. um, she was in a cat fight. And anyways, my blind cat has a food addiction problem and she had um, gotten lost for a month and a half, came back and she was, she had lost a third of her weight and she was quickly gaining it back by just not stopping eating. And this is her issue one of her issues so I started to try and take the food away and just give her two meals but she was finding her way into a food container mm -hmm. and I mean there was just no stopping her <laughs> so, <laughs> I put addiction and everything else on us there's food addiction and you know I noticed one of the things that came up for her was repossessing the kidneys and I think maybe that had something to do with her calming down and not being in a frenzy to just eat all the time. Um, but it worked, whatever it was, it worked. And she's 
She knows when to stop. She only eats what she needs and she's lost a few pounds and she's her weight's normalized. And I'm very happy for her health there. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to share one other technique because what you said made me think of it. I used, I learned how to use the tool tab recently with the Ni Gong on the SRC. And one day I was just, you know, <clears throat> overly stressing about a certain thing. And I knew it was just, you know, it was a state of distress that was probably unnecessary and it was just running over and over in my head. And I put it in Ni Gong distress over such and such. And I ran a Ni Gong session and I couldn't believe it, but that was that stress and cause of distress was completely gone. It was so far away. I couldn't even hardly remember it being there. It was just, it was just unbelievable. Yay! It worked. Yay! And I am so grateful for it. <laughs> um, I, it's just, we only have a okay. little bit of time in that, and I need to let the advanced class go. Okay. And I have one more person to call on, Ernesto. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, well, since start speaking, let me do evolution. I restarted something I got away from, which is actually checking into certain foods before I actually eat them, whether or not they're in my best interest. So that was a good bring back to reality, you know, take care of myself that way. Um, I've been using a variety of things from each class in different ways. Um, on the SRC, what I've been using most recently um, was the, the, what's called the food energizer technique, uh, sustenance enhancer or something like that. So this is part of the advanced tool set, if this doesn't sound familiar to you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And just doing it after each meal. And uh, it's not that my digestion feels any better, but my overall functioning and you know energy level is definitely upgraded as a result of that. Yeah. So just for that alone, it's been worth the trip. You know. Awesome! Yay! Good job, yes, ma'am. Okay, yes, ma'am. So I don't know anything. <laughs> I literally bought the computer on Wednesday night and turned it on on Thursday. Keith. Is his name? Kevin. Kevin. Yeah. Kevin did the was installing the software and he was just poking around and showing me a couple of things. He says, "Oh, well, you just press this button and it'll. If you don't know what's wrong, just press the button." And it popped up. You know, you've got something on your right side, on your leg, near the calf, and I had just seen Dr. Cynthia, and she had worked on my knee, and I've had, and had I have excruciating pain in my knee, and ran the program. Pain was gone instantly. I was like, "How did that happen?" And I know, and, and right, and then he says, "Oh, well, you can do it on anything. You can do it on inanimate objects." And I was like, "Well, I'm selling my house. Could that possibly work?" We're having showing after showing, and nobody is looking at it. And he goes, "Yeah, sure. What, what? How do you want the house to be?" And I was like, "I don't know. Welcoming and sell for uh, the price. So the price." and be welcoming and you know have people feel warm and you know sunshiny in the house or whatever and we got you know we're getting an offer Yay! Yay! I, was going yesterday. I didn't even know it was happening it was just so it's the magic of energy it's eyes <laughs> it's, it's, Oh, Good. Man, man. Okay. So it's awesome. And so you. So so for those of you that are new, and a reminder to everyone else. So you've heard stories now of how people are using this in their lives, and you've also heard there are techniques that you'll learn that are things that you can learn how to do. Um, you'll learn how to do them without any tools. You'll learn how to do them with a pendulum, which is a tool, and then you'll learn how to use SRC in order to augment this. I always teach how to do it first. The computer program is very helpful and it's beneficial, but it's your job to know how to do it right. because then also the computer program has a better interaction with you. The more you know and the more that it's in your energy, then the better relationship that it's going to have with being able to tap into that energy. So, um, okay, good. Right now, I want those of you who have taken the class before to, you're going to walk out into the lobby with Ray and he's going to go through some advanced SRC work with you. Um, you three get to stay with me and we're going to get to do the fundamentals of energy evolution. So I'll give you a moment.